Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to talk more about Splinter Forge, but also about Splinterlands. I've seen some comments from you guys talking about my recent video where I was getting into beginning my journey within Splinter Forge. And I'm liking this game. This is, if you don't know, it's another blockchain based video game that runs on Hive and lets me use my NFTs from Splinterlands in order to earn more rewards for my time and attention, more cryptocurrency more benefit for my time and attention 237 in this i think this is the silver league monster anyways not great i need to keep climbing but as you can see i'm earning you know that's nine electrum and 8.56 forgium uh, for that one battle i was regularly claiming like 12 or 11 or even 15 by fighting with the bronze person. Why does this matter? If you love Splinterlands, why does any of this matter? I'm telling you, it matters because one, you can receive more rewards for the same cards you already own, right? If, you, if you're if you just taking advantage of Splinterlands, you're only taking advantage of part of the pie that's available to you. And then secondly, you actually can use some of your rewards that you've received from Splinter Forge in order to pour back into your Splinterlands. And so the question is, not one or the other, but why not both? So I want to just, it's going to be a kind of a roundup conversation on this issue, talking broadly about Splinterlands and Splinter Forge, getting the most of your rewards for the NFTs that you hold in this game, but then also how you can use one to benefit the other, especially if you're just a starter, maybe you're low level, you don't even own any cards, as we'll read in one of the comments below. But before we get into anything more, I need to say thank you to Splinter Coach. Splinter Coach is sponsor of the video and they've been sponsoring the channel. They are supporting us financially so that we can make content like this happen. And I love this app. It's a website, splintercoach.com, and you can visit it right now. The link's in the description. They have a seven day free trial that you can sign up for and give it a shot. It's going to track your personalized data. I mean, your wins, your losses, the cards you're playing with, the monsters and summoner pairs, the synergies that are working for you. What mana caps are, is it working and when is it not? What rule sets are going going wrong and which ones are going right for you and out of all that data you're going to get two things one a lot of entertainment because you're actually going to be able to review and dive deep into some power and prowess that you have within this game that's cool i love that but then also it's going to give you an ability to extract more rewards for your time and attention because when you observe problems like conqueror yes like always loses you then start to learn to refrain from moving away from that or maybe i'm just doing that summoner wrong so you know even that is it's this tool that's going to allow me to grow and learn so check out splinter coach you're going to like it seven days for free thanks a lot splinter coach and get into it so this conversation around splinterlands splinter forge which one why not both it comes from a comment that i saw here Play to earn gaming. And of course he covered it, right? Check him out, guys. Play to earn gaming. He dropped the comment. He goes, I'm in Diamond and I own zero Splinterlands cards. I made 12,000 Forge from beating the boss on leaderboard. It only cost me 500 Forge to rent my cards. And I made about 11,000 Forge profit. It's ridiculous compared to Splinterlands. Guys, do you hear that? Some of you out there... I've heard for years now, Splinterlands is a whales only game. The only one who's benefiting are the rich, the guys who were here years ago. And meanwhile, people like play to earn gaming are pointing out to you the opportunity that's in front of you, which is namely that there are some really inexpensive options and ways that you can extract reward for your time and attention. One of them being Splinter Forge. You can in Splinter Forge, you're going to use the same cards you already have in Splinterland. As I already said, that means you can double dip on those rewards, right? So if you buy or rent any cards for Splinterlands and you're spending, let's say you're spending, you know, 5,000 DC to equip your deck so that you can compete in Splinterlands, you should be maximizing the returns of that. How do we do it? We play in the rank battles and we earn as many chests daily and season wise as we possibly can. We play in as many guild brawl battles as we can. We play in as many events as we can. And then we go over to Splinter Forge and we play as much over here as we can. And if we happen to get lucky and be the one that draws the killing blow on one of these summoners, there's amazing reward opportunities. The, the This guy here, he just died. 
The killing blow reward for this boss is four crates and 3,900 forge. In addition to the thousands and thousands of forge that you get for winning the leaderboard. In addition to the, the dozens and dozens or maybe even hundreds and hundreds of forge that you're going to get from winning battles. This person got uh, 171 wins, which presumably means they, they had, you know, thousands of forge, I, I, I would assume. If you're playing, if you're getting this many points per battle, I think you're getting a good amount of forge per battle. Actually, this is your forge. So that's your, that's how many you earned. I think, I think that's how many they earned from the 171 battles. But then also is that, I think I might be getting that confused, but I believe there's a leaderboard component and then there's your per battle win. Um, and so point is you can extract even more, right? It's not just rank battle, brawl battle, guild bra battle within Splinter Sands. It's another avenue. And when we look at play to earn gaming co comment, play to earn gaming's comment, he's he made 12,000 forge from beating the boss and it cost him 500 of those forge to then rent the cards to 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 complete that process, to repeat that process. That's so awesome because it means that there's a sustainability to it. It means that it's one more way that you can extract value for your efforts within Splinterlands. It's one more reason why you want to own cards to the best of your ability. Of course, sometimes you're going to rent them, but if you, it's more usefulness, more utility for the cards you already hold in Splinterlands. This is awesome. And more of this is coming. This is this is why I'm so excited about this revolutionary sort of technology and this opportunity within blockchain based video games within Hive specifically, because we know that tower defense is going to have some element of card staking. We know that land, which is a game within the game, is going to have card staking. It's going to have mining. It's going to have you have to like defeat the um, the souls or whatever the occupied spaces have souls. You have to defeat the souls. So there's like games within the game and they keep relying on these assets that you've already been accumulating for your time and attention, whether that's, you know, old reward cards that you were putting together through, you know, your, through your chests and, you know, your effort or whether it's soul bound cards and, you know, the cards you're accumulating now that have quote unquote, no value, but they're being, they're useful. They're, they provide functionality in the form of victory, whether it's in, like I say, rank, guild, brawl, um, or tournaments, or or um, Splinter Forge, and then again in the future over land and and so on and so forth. So, I guess this video is just me trying to point out what I'm recognizing now. Again, I've always said that that, that I think the the best way to extract reward from from Splinterlands and from blockchain based video games is from investing that time and attention and and putting in like grinding it, grinding it, enjoying it every day so that you make these trivial rewards and they grow, they stack and stack over time to the point where one day, if there happens to be an, a parabolic move in the token or the card assets, you have positioned yourself in a way where you'll be maximized, you'll receive maximized benefit from that parabolic move. You can't plan on these things, but really from my perspective, the game is fun. It has a future. Therefore, I want as many of these assets as possible because I'm expecting that parabolic move. You might say, Dwayne, it's a hope and a prayer. I'm saying I feel confident enough to put, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 worth of value on this in this space. And I don't think that's unfounded. I think I'm, when you look at the team and their development, when you look at their history, when you look at the survival through the bear markets, when you look at you know, the player base and its growth, even though it's not where we, these things aren't where we want them to be ultimately, like we're not at the finish line. You have to admit we've come a long way and things look really, really optimistic. And, uh, and so I'm loving Splinterlands and I always have, but more than that, now I'm seeing that for the first time in years, there's something fresh that's exciting me. And it is Splinter Forge for sure. This is part of it because I'm enjoying it. It's one more way I can I can extract value. I'm earning forge. Uh, I'm I've been upgrading my hero. Like I said earlier, I got like a juicy little bow over here, a legendary regular foil, two sockets, level two, slapped a, a max level. I think it's like a elite turquoise gem in there or whatever to give me 
It's five base damage, and I think this adds another seven, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, for a total of twelve. And um, yeah, I've been spending a little coin on this, but I like this sort of thing. And I've maybe spent maybe two hundred dollars, and now I'm just like letting it go. Plus, this is not the only thing. I just mentioned to you a million things land and tower defense and i didn't even mention um golem overlord which is every day i'm in here every day i'm claiming every day i'm now making something like probably 90 part a day and we're still around 20 cents apart so the you know the the revenue keeps ticking up ticking up ticking up with this thing that i'm doing just pri quietly and privately in the back and i'm going to continue to post about golem overload also i'm saying if you are paying attention right now in this space, there are opportunities for you to scratch and claw your in this moment to position yourself wisely with relatively low or no cost so that in the future you're going to be positioned to receive the maximum benefit for any parabolic move that might come. And that's what play to earn gaming is talking about and what he's rejoicing over when he says He's using Forge to then trade into DC, to then rent cards, to then play F Splinter Forge. What? Like, your your the game is paying for itself, plus double giving you a double dip on the cards you've already rented. It's just awesome, guys, and it's fun. So, I'm loving it. Splinterlands is amazing. We're gonna keep. This is it. We're gonna keep doing this. And I'm now. It feels like I'm like newly invested, newly excited, and and. There's a whole new angle to it with with games like Gollum Overlord and with Splinter Forge. So I hope you're enjoying that with me. And I just appreciate you guys supporting the channel. And once again, thank you so much to Splinter Coach for the, the sponsorship. And guys, definitely check it out. You're going to enjoy this. I One of the things before I go, I love that some of these blow me away. Dr. Blight, 17 and 9. This card I know is awesome and I've known is awesome pretty much since day one. And, but like, just when you see the data, like it's wins 17 out of uh, 26 battles. That's amazing. It's like, it's a total game changer. And then there are other cards that kind of surprise you the other way, like Pelicor Bandit, six and 10. I, it's such a strong card. I must be missing, like, I am missing the Saber Shark. And I wonder if maybe the lack of the Saber Shark at the highest level is really one of the reasons why my Pelicor Bandit and my blue team haven't been winning the way it should be. The point is you can dive deep with, an, with a tool like this to explore what's going on there and then answer those questions for yourself and then reposition yourself by acquiring other cards. And so I think it's a learning tool, plus it's entertaining. Check it out, Splinter Coach, splintercoach.com. Thanks, guys. Have an amazing day. God bless.